Hi, I'm Michelle, and this is Unusual and Freaky Facts. So I didn't have a show up last week because I went on vacation. I got to go to Lafayette, Louisiana for Mardi Gras and to visit family. And while I was there, I got to see some pretty cool sights. So at least for this week and next week, and possibly the week after, we will be having videos of my vacation. So I got to go see the St. John's Cathedral and the better part for me, the St. John's Cathedral Cemetery. Now it's right downtown Lafayette, Louisiana. St. John's Cemetery is actually the first Catholic cemetery in Lafayette and the town grew up around it and the courthouse. This is St. John's is St. It's in the old downtown and it was built in around 1824. The money was donated by Jean Mouton, who I believe was a relative of Alexander Mouton, and we're going to go see the Alexander Mouton house later. It's very, very close to the St. John's Cathedral Oak. I have a giant oak tree that's out front, and they do something pretty unusual with their giant oak trees in Louisiana. Any tree that's over 100 years old and 17 feet in circumference is actually given a certificate and they have to name it and it becomes part of the Live Oak Society that was started by the University of Louisiana. So this, this is the Cathedral Oak. It's the oldest oak in this area and it's said to be at least 500 years old. It's huge. I'm probably 30 feet away from him and still can't even get the whole thing into the camera. And now for my favorite part, the cemetery. <laughs> so this is the main gate and the saying above it in French says, I will wipe away every tear, which is a very nice sentiment for being in a cemetery. The cemetery was established in the 1820s and has tombs for people in almost every war we've fought, including from the revolution all the way up to the modern conflicts. And as you can see, it's a pretty large cemetery for being actually downtown. So this is the tomb of Mouton, and they're the ones who donated the land for the cathedral. Now some of the tombs do appear to be underground tombs, in order to be buried underground here, due to the high water table, you have to have a watertight tomb built below ground. One of the reasons for the above ground tombs also is the water table that affects ground level. As you can see, that tomb was probably at one point perfectly straight on flat land and has now been tilted sideways. And the ground here has actually sunk about a foot. So you can see some of these that were perfectly straight are now actually not straight. What they've had happen is some of the bodies that were buried in the ground when it, the water table rises due to flooding, they push the coffins out of the ground and as you can imagine that's not very pleasant for the families of the people who have their relatives pushed out of the ground, which was the reason for starting the above ground tombs. So many different types of tombs here, from family vaults to individual tombs. And there's lots of crosses and angels. According on the style of flower or the symbols that were used on tombs, it meant things. Certain flowers were reserved for women who died before marriage, for children, for lovers, and for other types of meanings. Very interesting if you start looking into the history of symbology on gravestones. All of the alleys in between the gravestones are named. The one that I'm about to walk on is St. Paul's Alley. There are a variety of materials that are used for the tombs as well. Everything from old concrete to newer bricks and this one has a lot of really old bricks so old in fact that I don't even know if you'd be able to read the name that was originally on the tombstone. Here are some more of the Moutons, the family that donated the land here for the cathedral. A lot of the names are 
French, although we do get some Italian and some Spanish names. I've been walking for probably 10 minutes now, and I am not all the way to the edge. There are just so many beautiful, beautiful tombs here from the beginning, the 1820s, all the way up to modern times. And as you can see, there's the cathedral in the distance, and this one is named St. Joseph Alley. So I'm probably going to take this one to head back towards the cathedral. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed St. John's Cathedral. Any of the sites where we got our information will be listed in the descriptions. Subscribe to the Quinny Pants channel for other unusual and interesting content. And leave comments down below if you have any suggestions for future shows. And please rate the video for us. Have an unusual and freaky day.